Hello and welcome back to Build a CubeSat. I'm Manuel and today I'm going to tell you how I started designing the structure for my CubeSat. Having looked at a bunch of different CubeSat structures, a lot of them seem to be monolithic solutions where each component can only be used in that specific configuration. I would like to try and take a different approach where you have a small number of individual components which you can use in different configurations. Say for instance, uh, ideally if you want to go from one unit to three units, all you would have to swap out is the rails. This, together with the fact that I'm slightly paranoid about the batteries, because I'm convinced that they are going to be the most vulnerable part of the whole system, led me to think of the EPS compartment as the core of the whole thing around which the CubeSat is built. I have printed a mock-up of the volume that this EPS compartment may occupy here, assuming a height of about 25 millimeters. Additionally, I would like to make assembling and disassembling the structure as easy and painless as possible to encourage testing as you fly. So this needs to be a straightforward, robust and reliable process. Also, I hope that this will make it more accessible for non-engineers, specifically I'm thinking about schools and the like, and maybe even encourage more rapid prototyping when it comes to developing a payload. In practical terms, for me, this means having as few tap tools as possible and avoid needing thread locker. Instead, I would like to use locking nuts and Belleville washers. This also means that you won't have to worry about stripping out a thread and you don't need any special tools to um, install thread inserts like helicoils. Lastly, I tend to build things as light as possible without incurring extra cost. Not that the mass budget is going to be a huge concern for this project, but I just don't think that we need to send any dead weight to orbit. Uh, as a general principle for me, if it doesn't serve a purpose in orbit, it doesn't belong there. So let's go ahead and uh, have a close look at the mock-up I have printed out. All right, so starting out with the EPS compartment as the core of the whole thing, this means that a lot of the dimensional accuracy will have to come from this part. My idea is to have almost dovetail-like slots on each edge against which the rails would register. So this is basically a mock-up of a rail with a slight fillet on the outside edge and this chamfer on the inside edge. Um, of course, none of this is um, to scale, That's just it's just a mock-up. But my idea is to have these register against the other parts like this. Yeah and then be bolted in place. So for now a little bit of uh, hot glue will have to do and I'll um, fast forward through assembling this real quick. So while this is cooling down, let's talk about how I would like to keep the PCBs in place. It's a very similar idea in that I would like to have a part that registers against the inside edge of the rail. And it's, it's basically like a, a clamp. So this would be the fixed jaw of the clamp and this would be the moving jaw. And they go together like this. You can see they have this, these slots on the sides and these are a little bit thicker than a PCB. So I'm assuming 1.6 millimeter PCBs and the slots on these are going to be two millimeters with a five millimeter spacing. Um, again, of course, this, all of this is not to scale, it's just a mock-up. But the idea, let me just grab a PCB. These are some um, prototyping PCBs I have left over from one of the high altitude balloon flight projects. The idea is that um, you would have the PCB stuck in there and you would then um, basically fix the moving joint place with a bolt and this would exert some clamping force from the moving jaw to the PCB and hold it in place. It's, um, I think this is going to be enough force to hold this firmly in place, especially because you have one of these on each edge. So um, let me put together a little demo real quick. Uh, 
All right, so this has been a bit fiddly as well, but um, that's because none of the dimensions actually are accurate. But basically this illustrates how I imagine this going together. Of course, probably you will not populate uh, each one of the 5mm spaced slots. Um, of course you can, if you have a lot of single-sided PCBs, but in all likelihood you will have um, some who populate the slots and some who have like daughter boards on them. Um, yeah, so it gives you a lot of flexibility. And then the idea is that's gonna be quite tricky to do right now because it's not really holding together well. But the idea is to have this, oh, actually it kind of works, have this go onto this um, at any height you like. And then you would fix it in place with bolts, nuts and bolts, of course. So yeah, that's, um, that's what I have for the moment. I'm actually kind of surprised how well this mock-up mock is working right now. So that's, that's kind of surprisingly good. <laughs> if all of this seems a bit like reinventing the wheel, it probably is. I am sure there are a bunch of easier ways for doing all of this. But for the time being, I think I would like to see where this, this path leads. Um, we haven't really looked at the cat for this yet, but we are going to do so in the next episode. I have also ordered a set of prototype parts, so for the rails and for these clamps from, from PCBWay, which should arrive in about two weeks time. So we are probably also going to be looking at those in the next episode. Um, yeah, I think that's it for today. Let me know if you like this video. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.